In this lesson, we're going to set up our first composition and talk about some of the things you need to know first before you jump right into your After Effects projects. Okay, so if you're getting started with our project files, After Effects 02 underscore begin is where I'm starting right now. But you don't have to open that one up yet if you don't want to. You can just go ahead and open up your After Effects program because right now this doesn't have anything in it. This After Effects project doesn't contain anything yet because I'm going to show you how to get outside files into After Effects. And everything in After Effects is built in a composition. So these are the building blocks of anything you do in After Effects, the compositions. And that's one of the first things that we're going to create together here. So there are a few ways to create a new composition in After Effects. And the way that I am going to start out showing you, and sometimes the way that I normally start my very first composition, is right up here in the menu along the top. So come up here to Composition, we'll click that, and go to New Composition. So whenever you're creating a project in After Effects, the project itself is simply After Effects being opened. You already have a project open at that point if After Effects is running. Then the composition is what fits inside of that project and you can create all kinds of different things inside of those compositions. So that's where we are now with our composition settings. And some of this stuff here at the beginning can get a little bit tedious and a little bit tricky to comprehend, but it's very important that you set your composition up properly from the start so that your project goes as smoothly as possible while you're working on it. So I have this little dialog box open and it has all the information which can be intimidating again, but let's just talk about the basics for what we need to know to get set up. So the very first thing at the top of this list is my composition name. Now, if this is going to be my main composition, which it is in this case, I usually put main in the title of my composition. And you can come up with your own system, but it's usually really helpful to indicate which composition is the main comp just to keep you organized for later in your project when you're looking and searching through everything. So I'm going to go ahead and just call this main composition. Okay, so now we're going to drop down here into this area and we see the first thing is the preset. And if I click that drop down, we see that we have a ton of different things to look from or to look at in this menu. So what does all this mean? Well, the first little section here are just different presets that you can use for web. And honestly, most of the time that you're going to be creating a web video, you wouldn't even use these because they're very small. Probably if you're creating a video for the web that you're going to post to some site just for playback, it's going to be one of these down here. Now, this next section is usually for television. Now, there's a lot of presets here, and I don't want to spend too much time going into the history and all the specifics of these, but just know that they are for television. Now, this next box is going to be the one that you're probably going to be concerned with the most, and it's the type that we're going to be using for our project today. So these can be TV, web, most formats are moving towards this output type. So there are, um, the, they're definitely the ones that you're going to want to be most familiar with. And there's just a little bit of a difference in settings here for what's standard over in Europe and what's going to be standard here in the United States. So all of these numbers and letters that you see here have a different meaning. So for me today, I'm going to be choosing the HDV slash HDTV 72025. And that's this second one down here. So I'm going to go ahead and click that really quickly. Before I do click that, I want to just say that these down here at the bottom, which you can't see right now because this is kind of going out of the recording area, but this list right here, this is for film. This is probably not something that you're going to be tackling right away with your first project. So you don't need to be too concerned with that right now, but just know that that's what this section is for. Okay, so we're going to come up here to the HDV slash HDTV 72025 preset. So go ahead and click that now. So all of these 
little letters and numbers have a meaning for what it's going to do to my composition whenever I choose this. So let's break it down and talk about what that means. The HDV slash HDTV simply means that it's going to be an HD resolution. So this is big enough to play at an HD res. Now, it's not the largest HD res that there is. There is a size bigger than this, but I'm going with this kind of middle setting here just so that my computer doesn't slow down too much. So what that means is it, re it really has something to do here with this also the 720 number. So these are measured by the height of the composition. So 720 is the height and that's going to actually be the same height as the video that you're watching now. The video that you're watching now is 1280 by 720. So that can kind of give you an idea of what this looks like whenever it is at its um, final output setting. Now this last number here, the 25, is the frame rate. And 25 is a European frame rate. So I'm actually going to be changing mine to a different frame rate that's a little more common for motion graphics. And that is 24 frames per second. So it's not that much different from the 25. So just come down here to where we see frame rate and we'll change that 5 to a 4. And now you see that this switches to custom, which is the preset that th is there at the top, but we have to really just kind of delineate what those properties are. But I'm using most of the properties that I found in the preset here for the HDV slash HDTV 72025. Okay, so really the reason why I'm switching to this 24 frames per second is simply because it has a more filmic look. It's regarded as really what film is best just seen in the cinema. So that's what we're going to be using for motion graphics. And that's just really widely it's accepted as what looks good for motion graphics. Anything that we go too much higher than 24 frames per second is going to really start to bloat your file size whenever you do a final output. Now definitely your 29.97 frames per second, that's not going to make your file too big. So if you wanted to use that also you could but for motion graphics, I like to use 24. Now, anything that you go too far below 24 frames per second, getting down in here to the 15 or anything below that range, it's going to start looking a little bit choppy, almost like stop motion animation. So these are things that you want to be a little bit aware of whenever you're first setting up that initial comp. Now, what if you're sitting here and you're just saying, I don't understand what these numbers even mean. What does 24 frames per second really mean? What is 18 frames per second, 15 frames per second? What does this mean? So let's just talk about that really quickly. So really, your frame rate is referring to how many single pictures fit together in the span of one second. And really that just comes together to create a moving image. So a frame rate of 24 means that there's going to be 24 frames shown every second. So once we start editing a little bit in the program and we get into that, you'll start to see kind of how those frames fit together and it's gonna start to make a lot more sense. So if you don't get it all just yet, don't worry about it. We'll keep reinforcing this as we go through the course. Okay, so there's a couple more things we need to talk about before we finish up the composition settings, and that's going to be the resolution, time code, and duration. So resolution right now is set to full. So that just means whenever I am looking at this, once I start creating my video, I'm going to be looking at it at a full resolution. So everything will be crisp and clear. And if I wanted to, I could change this to any other setting, but it's easy to change once I'm actually working in the composition. So I hardly ever mess with this setting at this point when I'm just doing my composition settings because I like to switch back and forth with my resolution later on if I feel like my computer's running more slowly. And really that's one of the only reasons why you would change it from full res if it starts to feel like your computer's really having a hard time trying to process that full resolution, you can turn this down a little bit. But you don't have to do it in your composition settings. So don't worry about that for now. Okay, the start time code, we're just going to leave that zeroed out. I always like to start at zero. Really the only time you would start at a different point maybe is if you're working with different kinds of footage and we're just doing a motion graphics project from start to finish. So starting at zero is 
perfect. And then you have your duration, which right now this is just defaulting to 30 seconds. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this down to about 17 seconds, just because I'm not really sure how much time we need, but I don't want my timeline to have too much time on it. And if we need to later, we can always come back and add more time. So go ahead and change yours to 17 seconds. And the background color being black is fine as well. That's a great just default that we'll be using. And it's not confusing um, for if I just change some to some random color that might get kind of confusing for what is actually existing on the timeline or existing in the background. But we'll get into all of that and what that means here in a minute. Okay, so now we're ready to click OK, finally. So go ahead and click OK now. And now we can see that that main composition popped into this window here in our composition view window. And because we don't have anything in it yet, it's just going to be black because that's what we set as our default uh, background color. And then we also see over here in our project panel that we have our main composition, just as we named it. And it's just sitting over there waiting for us to add more things to it. And one more place that we view information about our main composition is down here in our timeline. Now, because we haven't added anything to the composition yet, our timeline is empty. It's just as these two gray boxes. But after a little while, this is going to be full of different layers and lots of things that we'll be working with and animating. And it's going to be exciting. So get ready. And now you know a lot more about compositions and you should be able to make good decisions on your own the next time you're choosing to set up a whole brand new composition.